Today's video, we're going to be checking out the new NECA toy release of Leatherface, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3. This is Retro Cloth Leatherface. These retro cloth releases tend to be a little bit taller than conventional releases from NECA toys. And Leatherface here is no exception. The figure stands at about eight and a half inches tall. Accessory wise, he comes with, well, a chainsaw. It to be expected he would come with a chainsaw. And one of the coolest looking chainsaws, and one of the neat things I really liked about Leatherface was uh, Leatherface's chainsaw. And it looks really neat. Of course, you've got the saw is family across the side of the chainsaw blade, also on the other side as well. A very coarse looking series of teeth around the outer parameter of the, the, tech, the chainsaw blade. Got a little bit of weathering. They've added like a, like a bit of a wash of, of black in there. And it looks like they've added a little bit in this area here, just in the little recessed areas of the teeth, just to make it stand out a little bit. Really like the and these are all really elements based on the movie designs, not so much from the retro cloth release, but NECA gives a fairly, you know, close representation of how the chainsaw looks in the movie, right down to the little gnarled teeth that are on the end, on the edges here, where actually the blade comes out from the, the main chainsaw. Uh, it's adorned in gold and silvers with a little bit of brown for the handle here. You've even got the little pulley and the fan portion of the chainsaw blade, even like the little nozzle cap where you would add the, the gasoline. Again, it's aged. It's given just a little bit of a wash to it so it actually doesn't look like a very pristine looking chainsaw. Love it. Loved it in the movie, and I think it looks really good here in, uh, in a plastic representation as well. Now to put it in his hand, you simply can't. Let me just show you the figure here so you can see where we are on this. The figure's hands are sculpted shut. They are still, they have little holes in their hands, granted, but you can't pry really the fingers open in, in, order, in order to fit really the chainsaw into place. So what you have to do, there's two places here on the chainsaw that disconnect. One here, where the bottom part of the chainsaw separates from the handle portion, and then just kind of plugs into place. But this has leaves enough of a gap you can fit in between his fingers. The other point, right here where this section ah, just on the side here disconnects and that can fit over his uh, or through his hands as well the little screw notches on the side do get a little bit in the way and let me show you what we're doing here so we'll take the chainsaw and we'll just kind of pry open the hand portion and then we'll just slide it through his hand just like that and then you can Plug it back into place if you want, or you can just kind of leave it loose if you if you so wish. That's the easier part. And I mean, you can really just leave it loose. You know, you can have them just twirling it around like a maniac. Uh, or what you can also do too is just attach the second part. And this is actually the more trickier of the two parts. You have to then feed it through his hand. Now, granted, you want the chainsaw to go like this, so you're going to feed it from the bottom. And like I said, those little screws get caught in between his fingers, so you have to kind of pry those through. Make sure you fit it over the plate, and then just apply it back into place. And you've got, you've got Leatherface holding his chainsaw. Obviously, this is the route that they would have to have gone because the, the hands are so dense of a plastic, there's no way you'd be able to wedge that. That would guarantee snap if you try to fit his fingers through that. Uh, this is a lot easier of a route. Well, easier of a route than forcing it. Not so much the easiest route trying to feed everything through. This is a lot easier here. This one gets a little bit trickier here. And then you can just kind of adjust, bring his hands over the loop if you want. Um, but I think I, I think that's a pretty good placement for where the chainsaw should be, at least for my for my displays. The only thing I didn't really do is didn't twist the hand the right way, but uh, it looks good. I think it does look quite good. One of the longest chainsaw blades, also in the Texas Chainsaw sequels, was this particular one here. You know, there's something about I'm just going to put this 
take this out of his hand so we can look at the figure a little bit more. There's something to be said about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 uh, coined Leatherface. It's actually one of my favorites, if not my favorite, of the Chainsaw sequels. I don't know really, really what it is about it, but it just feels just feels like a more entertaining movie for me than, of course, the original. The original is always classic. I mean, no matter what it is, the original of a horror franchise will always have a soft spot. But I think Leatherface here is probably my favorite of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequels. I also really like, and uh, somebody's going to ask me to cash in my horror fan membership card, but I also quite like Next Generation as well. It's just really over the top. But uh, I quite I I would go to watching those I think before I would watch one and two, uh, two I don't really watch all that much but I do find myself watching uh, part three, you know more than more than those other sequels. So here we have Leatherface, in a figure that I never thought we would ever see. Um, I don't think I don't think Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a library necessarily that NECA sees value in to this to the extent that they would cast a brand new mold uh, with a seven inch figure. Uh, retro cloth figures are a lot easier because you're really only making the fabric and you're just re-sculpting in a lot of cases the head and the hands. The bodies are just generic bodies underneath all of this so it's a lot easier for them to create new sculpts for this and this rather than head to toe. It's a lot cheaper as well. Face sculpt and it's hard to use the term face sculpt because really his face is underneath this gruesome looking mask, but it's a combination of multiple different skins all stitched together. You can see the little stitch work on the side and his long hair sticking out from the back. I don't know if I would even say like Leatherface from that movie has as much the scary look that he has in maybe in part one or maybe even part two to some extent. Part three, it seems like just so much more a Hollywood feeling Texas Chainsaw Massacre than anything else. I think that is also the one that uh, New Line produced as well. Outfit wise, he gets slightly a, a, an orangey tan, closer borderline to an orange than anything else. Orange shirt, orange tie, black slacks, a black or brown slacks, brown belt. And one of the other notable traits of Leatherface from the third one is that he's also got this kind of harness, this makeshift kind of crutch system that he's harnessed around his one leg and he kind of drags himself a little bit more. You can see how very crudely it's been constructed here. One side relying kind of on a more of a like a makeshift pull and the other side like uh, just like a metal, uh, like a strip of metal here and it's been banded together with metal bands on the back and leather straps on the front as a pair of cowboy boots. Looks pretty good here on the figure. No peg holes on the undersides of his feet. I don't think I would, I would say I would put him in the category of a figure that doesn't really stand all that well. I mean, putting him down, he stands perfectly fine. His feet are flat enough, despite the fact he's got a gap with a heel and the front of his boot, but he stands perfectly fine. I don't have any real issues with the standing. But the only thing I really don't care for on this particular figure is the very noticeable way, at least on mine, that it looks like they've glued the tie to the shirt. The tie is thin and flimsy, but something I can get past. I have a harder time looking at the fact that the, the knot of the tie has just been glued to the top of the shirt rather than actually, I would not expect it necessarily to be, you know, attached underneath the collar, but at the very least, I wouldn't want a very noticeable, you know, we glued it to the top of the, the shirt. And that's ultimately what we're looking at right here. I suppose the shirt is kind of like more of a Western kind of cowboy sort of shirt. The belt's a little on the like flimsy cheap side, but again, it's laced through the loops and it, it does what purpose it needs to do. Sculpting on the hands are pretty decent. They got a little bit of veins they've incorporated to the top of the palms and they've added a very dirtied paint wash to it. And of course, between the mud all over his shirt and the splattered blood, you can see Leatherface sports very much both on his shirt. Not so much on his pants. His pants stay relatively clean. A pair of pockets on the back, but it's really only the top of the pockets. Yeah, his pants are relatively clean. It's more so the shirt, 
I think that gets the majority of the wear and tear. Posability on this guy. His head rotates all the way around. He's got a ball joint going on there. Hinge up and down. He's got uh, universal joints on the shoulders. In, uh, in other words, the shoulder, the arm hinges outward. And then you've got the rotation forward. You've got the rotation back. Mindful, of course, the fact that the fabric will bunch and start pulling on itself. And obviously, the further you rotate the arm all the way around. Swivel point on the bicep. He's got a hinge on the elbow and a rotation and hinge on the hands. Got a waist swivel. He's got a split on the legs. If you wanted to do that with your leather face figure, by all means, you can do that. Forward and back motion on the legs. Simple, very simple bend on the knee. And then he's got a hinge on the foot. No ankle pivot, because let me just show you what's going on here. The hinge, it's just a hinge back and forth on the foot. And here is a good example of the sort of under body that they're using. It's a very generic body, but it allows, again, your... I left it off really, but you're incorporating new sculpt on boots, hands, and face. Everything else really relies then on fabric to get the point across. And for the point across, I think this one is really quite successful here on Leatherface. One last thing I forgot to incorporate was the Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, I was going to say part 3, but the artwork that comes inside the clamshell with the figure. Looks really good. There's the signature there of the artist down below. Again, I want to put these into sheet protectors, put them into a binder or something like that. I still have the uh, the Jasons from the Friday 13th retro cloth releases, and I've also got the Freddy Krueger's. Going to want to incorporate these ones as well. I think the artwork is stunning. I mean, I really wish that NECA would uh, maybe release a book uh, depicting basically all of their releases, uh, all their artwork, uh, you know, where you can flip through and kind of look at the pages and stuff like that. I think that would be kind of cool. One thing also to note is just before we wrap up this review, the back of the package shows a different tie. Let me just show you what's going on here. The tie on the back indicates more stripes, whereas this tie here has kind of like little, little slashes, little lines on here. And also on the back, you can see that the tie looks like it's a real tie that's been wrapped around the collar. Whereas again, once this tie, comparing it to this tie here, the tie sadly, once again, has been glued to the top of the shirt. For final looks of the figure, I've got Leatherface here sporting his chainsaw. And something I do want to add to adding the chainsaw into his hand, I had actually added the bottom main handle of the chainsaw into his hand first, and then tried to loop the silver ring or the top portion of the chainsaw into his hand second. It's actually a lot easier if you feed the ring, the top portion of the chainsaw, through the one hand first and then simply just attach the wooden handle to the other hand second. A lot easier. It's a lot easier just to feed that all through than trying to do it the opposite way. And here holds the chainsaw perfectly fine. As a whole, I really quite like this figure. I don't really like the way the cheaply applied tie to his shirt but other than that, I do really dig the design and look of Leatherface. Personally speaking, I kind of wish that this guy was released in a 7-inch plastic figure. But a lot of times, the chances of that happening are very slim to none. The reason why NECA is doing so well with the retro cloth releases, as mentioned in the video, is that they're really only having to sculpt the head, the hands, and the feet. And then adding fabric, which is a lot easier to produce and more cost effective, adding fabric over an existing body. The idea of... of producing a mold from head to toe from scratch tooling a brand new mold can get very expensive and it's all the more reason why a lot of toy companies like to reuse molds when they can uh, NECA has found a nice little successful niche in the middle between action figure and high-end collectible by producing these retro cloth goodies we've already got ourselves a chop top and of course we've got some other figures that maybe may not have ever seen light of day as a plastic figure but certainly been able to be released here in retro cloth I would like to see this guy released as a figure myself. I don't know if the chances of that are really ever going to be happening, but I do really I do like the look of a retro cloth leather face as it's from one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. And no, I do not want to cash in my horror movie uh, fan card. Today, though, we were having a look at the brand new release of the NECA toys. This was the Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. This was retro cloth Leatherface. 
you guys haven't had a chance yet to subscribe to this channel, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. Of course, more videos are heading your way. And hey, if you want to check out some previous retro cloth reviews, I've got a playlist on this channel that you can check out and watch at your viewing pleasure. As always, guys, thanks for watching, as you always do. I'll see you next time.